most of the mechanics in Stardew Valley are great and work perfectly, but some we can exploit, I mean use them as they were intended to improve everything on a farm in a much easier way. I made this video in order to show everyone these tricks that you can use, since they can be truly game changing for most of the players out there. So let's begin. The first exploit that we have is something which was added in the 1.5 update, and that is the Mr. Key requests. More importantly, the Mr. Key fruit one. For many, this can be either easy to accomplish or a nightmare. But for the first request that you get about this, if you do it correctly, every future request can be a breeze. The trick is to get more than 500 key fruits and just sell the needed 500 while the leftovers you sell to Pierre. The next time you get the request, you can just go to Pierre's shop and buy all of the key fruits that you sold him. This trick can be really helpful for anyone wanting to avoid the hustle of farming for all of those crops all the time. Just be careful since some of the villagers may buy the crops in the meantime. For the next one, it also concerns the Mr. Key requests. I think with this he wants to make it easier for us and I'm really grateful for that. This trick here however concerns the legend fish, well more importantly their offspring. When you get the extended family quest for catching the offspring of all of the legendary fish, you can abuse that and just head on over to the mountain lake immediately. Forget about all of the other fish, just go and spend the entire quest duration to catch the legend too, since while the quest is active, you can catch multiple of any of the legendary fish. The legend 2 is the best fish for this since it has the same sale price as the legend and by just abusing this exploit you can easily get a lot of money. Also there is a small exploit that also concerns fishing that you get from the moment you get a fishing pole. After Willy gives you a fishing pole at the start, don't use it instantly, you can abuse that to your advantage to catch a hard fish more easily. To be honest, it's not much, but the first catch with the pole will always succeed no matter what, and if the fish is outside the green rectangle, it won't cause it to escape. You can maybe use this to your advantage, catching a harder fish or even a legendary one, but I don't know if anyone would use it for that, still it's a neat thing to know. Anyways, the next tip that we have is for all of those dungeon explorers or foragers while exploring the mines or skull caverns, you can use the screenshot option in the menu to see a quick layout of the floor, with all of the monsters and also ores and gems that you can find there. This will make your exploring much easier and you will know when this hellish floor appears basically, so you can bypass it easily with a staircase. For the foragers out there, this can also be used to check for forageable items around the bigger areas like the Cinderset Forest, Mountain Lake and even the beach so you don't waste time going there by foot around the areas that are really huge, for nothing. And speaking about foraging, there is something which can be used to increase the amount of berries you can pick up on the special days when the salmon berries or blackberries appear. To be honest I don't know if this is a glitch or not, but when you wake up on a day which is berry season and has the bushes filled with berries, you can just reset that day and the amount of berry bushes in the game will increase. You can do this trick a few times to get to the maximum amount of berries that you can receive on one day. This works best with having a higher level foraging profession, because you get multiple berries per bush and you can get around 200 plus berries per day just by foraging, which will be an amazing boost in energy. But hey there everyone, a little intermission here, but if you didn't know some of these tricks then you have to press that like button and also consider subscribing to the channel. And back to the video. The next thing that we can exploit is in the dungeons, and that is when an infested floor happens on a certain floor, in the mines or the dangerous mines, that infested floor will stay persistent on that number. So if you go outside and just re enter the mines by reaching that floor number, you will enter the infested floor again. This is best used for getting more monster kills for the Adventures Guild request so you can get some of the items they offer like the slime charmer ring or some of the other gear as well. This trick can be also used to gather materials like with the dust sprites. To do this, you can just get a monster mask and a burglar's ring and just spam the floors until you find the infested one. This will get you so much coal just by spamming this one floor. Another exploit that we have for the game 
is one that many players already know about, and that is the Stardew Valley Fair Wheel of Fortune. Well, you should know that this basic game, that you can earn the easiest points in the game, does favor one certain color, and that is green. You can use this trick to get all of the points needed to buy all of the stuff that Pierre sells. So if you want to reach the required amount of points, you should choose green. But don't bet everything, since once in a while it can go to orange, which can be bad for your points. Also, if you're in need of points in Stardew Valley, but don't know if you can win first place, there is a trick you can use to get a few points easily. But for this trick to work, you will need one item and that is Mayor Lewis's shorts. By placing his shorts on the display, he will get angry and offer you some hush money to remove the pants. And this trick can be used every fair, so you can easily stack up on points. If you already gave the pants to him, don't worry, grab a staircase and just put it in your pants slot on your character, which in turn will create the gold trim pants, giving you a pair which you can use for the Stardew Valley events. Are you sick and tired of replowing the land after every season change, using precious energy and time into fixing the planting spots, fertilizer and watering? Well, no more. There is a trick that you can use to save on time. For the first playthrough in the spring, you won't be able to do this trick, however, since you would need all that gold for crops. But afterwards, in the summer season, you can use the trick. Towards the end of the summer season, you can plant wheat which stays over the season keeping the tilled soil and fertilizer as well. And you can use this trick only for this season with wheat. The more better option is fiber seeds, which you can get by completing the community cleanup request by Linus. And those are the best seeds, which can be planted in any season including winter. So you would save a ton of energy and time with this and you would never bother doing any extra work when the seasons change, just replanting the crops you had. The last tip that I have for you is about panning, especially about getting shining spots more often, and also better items overall. When you pan on the dig site on Ginger Island, you have a higher chance in getting shining spots and also the lucky ring than any other place in the game. I think this happens because the dig spot is quite small, but if you get a lucky ring at one of the spots here, just be here all the time and try to see if you can get it in the same exact spot. Because if you pan in the same exact spot, you'll get another lucky ring. So this is a nice way to get more lucky rings for your use. So everyone, what did you think? Did you know about some of these features that you could exploit and which ones have you used in your playthroughs? Let me know down below. If you liked what you saw, consider pressing that like button and joining my channel so you get notified about all of my future updates. I hope you have a great day and I will see you all in my next one. But till then... Stay safe!